morning, Susan. Now, we were just talking there with Kay Brereton. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about meth, although I appreciate that's not the main reason that you are here today. Should this have been seen as being a possible problem with giving people compensation that it was then going to be taken into account as assets? Well, uh, possibly yes. Um, I received uh, advice on this only a short time ago, um, and we're going to fix the problem pretty quickly. It's going to take a change to regulations. It doesn't need a legislation change in the parliament. It can be simply taken through cabinet and uh, dealt with by order in council. The, p- the point I want to make, though, is that um, this issue has not and will not cause any delay to the compensation payments. That process is underway. For the last five weeks, Housing New Zealand has been um, doing a lot of work. I'm advised that they have already confirmed eligibility for these payments uh, for more than 200 people who were affected. And they those people um, will get um, that payment uh, in the next few weeks, I'm advised. OK, now you said you got this advice a short time ago. What is a short time ago? Give us the uh, timeline. I think it's about a week ago. OK. Yeah. Can you guarantee that all of the people involved will get their compensation by Christmas? I can guarantee that everybody who has had their eligibility confirmed now, which is about 200 people, uh, will have the payments made by Christmas. And that's 200 out of how many? So there are about um, 800 tenants who were affected by this whole uh, sorry saga. Mm. And Housing New Zealand is now um, working directly with those people. It's actively working uh, with MSD to try to track people down and find them. It's doing a lot of advertising and public outreach, inviting people to come in and get in touch. And it's working directly with affected tenants Mm. to help them work through that process. 200 out of 800 will get their compensation by Christmas, you're guaranteeing. That's only a quarter. What about the rest of them? What about the three quarters? Yeah, so Housing New Zealand is is, uh, publicly um, inviting people who have been affected by this to get in touch with them. And, and Housing New Zealand will work directly with them to uh, establish the eligibility. What would you see as being a success in terms of numbers of people getting their compensation by the end of the year? Um, I, I couldn't put a number on that, Susie. I, what I would say is 200 is that, good enough or does it need to be more? Uh, I would hope it would be more. But look, um, uh, Housing New Zealand is, is actively trying to track people down working with MSD. So it's not as easy as you might think uh, at first glance, but the organisation is doing everything it can to find people, um, let them know about the eligibility and get it sorted so that payments can be made. OK, well, let's talk to you about KiwiBuild, which is the reason that you came in. And thank you very much for taking the questions on meth. The situation here, you've got, uh, what is it, a a graduate doctor and a marketing manager who are one of the new owners of the Kiwi Built Homes. Are those the sorts of people that you were after to try to capture, if you like, with Kiwi Built? The fact that young middle class couples, people with good jobs, often two incomes, professional uh, jobs, uh, have been locked out of the housing market shows just how terrible the housing crisis has got. Kiwi Built's a home ownership policy. It's about trying to help the people who only a decade ago would have quite naturally expected they would have been able to own their own home. But because of the massive yawning gap between incomes and house prices in places like Auckland, Hmm. they are now locked out. The thing is, though, weren't you wanting to target people who were going to find it even harder to get onto the ladder? Well, the, um, I know this, I know there's been some criticism that we're, that Kiwi Build is not targeted at low income uh, families. But mm. look, let's be really practical about this. Um, if you're a low income family, it's just not practical for you to be able to take on a three hundred thousand dollar or a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage because you simply won't be able to service the payments, the mortgage repayments. That's the state of the housing market right now. Mm. And what we're doing with Kiwi Build is we're not subsidising houses and giving them away cheaply. We are choosing to build affordable homes at the, in the lower quartile of the prices because the market has failed to build those homes itself. Less than 5% of new builds mm. have been affordable. So what we're doing is we're building affordable homes and we're selling them on to young Kiwi families. But your income cap of 180 for a couple, 180 thousand dollars for a couple as their combined income, is that too high? And what happens when these people, as your, you know, your example, will probably quite soon be earning above that cap? So, um, if you take, uh, let's let's stick with Auckland because that's the housing market mm. we're we're talking about. 
you could have a couple of teachers who are earning uh, between them $160,000. It's extremely difficult for them to find a home that they can afford mm. in the Auckland market. So I, the income cap is not a, it's not mandatory, it's not a requirement, it's a maximum. Mm. But is and it too high? No, I don't think so, because we want, um, look, the... Um, and what if about you, the cost of the houses? Are, are they too high in that case? Well, let, let's stick with the income cap for a second. The the group, the income group between who earn between eighty thousand and one hundred and eighty thousand, um, they have had the biggest fall in home ownership of any other demographic group in the last ten years. And so, what we're aiming to do is we're a party that stands for home ownership. We want to get more people into home ownership. Mm. But your and example is about to earn more than that. They're not going to be in that group anymore, are yeah, they? Yeah, but we can't have a criteria that says we're not going to sell you a Kiwi built house if you might earn more than the income cap sometime in the future. But there was criticism about the, the cap being too high yeah, anyway, and, and now this no, is the but situation Susie, I, with your I example. I completely reject the criticism that it's too high. Look, there are people um, in the first group of families who have bought these homes at McLennan in South Auckland. There are nurses, warehouse worker, an engineer, a designer, someone who works in marketing, a stay-at-home mum, a concrete worker, a student. This is a slice of middle New Zealand, and they've been locked out of the housing market for the last decade. We are giving them a chance because we believe in home ownership. Kiwi Build's not the only thing that we're mm. doing, right? We're building thousands of extra state houses. We're modernising the rental laws to give renters more security of tenure. Mm. We just put $100 million into more emergency housing to tackle homelessness. Mm. Kiwi Build's not the only thing. And on its own, it won't fix all the problems. It won't solve homelessness. But it is going to give a new, a new generation of young Kiwi families a crack at home ownership. How are the student and the stay-at-home mum financing this? I, they're, in, they're in couples. They're in relationships with, with the other person who's earning. So, look, I want to... I think that some of the criticism of this has been incredibly mean-spirited. Judith Collins yesterday went onto Facebook and trolled the personal Facebook page of one of these homeowning couples and then posted on social media questioning whether they deserved to be able to buy a Kiwi-built home because they had travelled overseas. Now, that is Trumpism and dirty politics together, and I think it shows the toxic culture in the National Party is alive and well. And I think for someone who wants to lead the National Party, that is a very, very strange way to behave. You think she wants to lead the National Party? Yes, I do. It's pretty obvious. I appreciate your time this morning. That's Phil Twyford, the Minister of Housing. It's now seven to eight. The man charged with killing 11 people in a Pittsburgh synagogue shooting has made a brief appearance in court. The US...